the first unit speaks about the biological development uh, that deals with the development during infancy and childhood. So from this unit, we will get an idea about the various stages of lifespan, the developmental tasks and the domains of human development, etc. So from this unit, we will be able to understand the prenatal development and physical development that occurs in infancy, babyhood, early childhood and late childhood and it elaborates the various physical hazards related with the developmental stages. So in the second unit is about the psychological development in infancy and childhood. From this unit, we will be able to understand the developmental themes in infancy and childhood, the early emotional development, the temperament, emotional relationships, uh, emotional behavior and various psychological hazards in the infancy and childhood. Then we will be dealing with the, the unit four is about the cognitive development, infancy and childhood. So that is something related to the thinking pattern of the child or the adolescent. So from this, we will be able to understand the intelligence that we use and that we have and the creativity a child or the adolescent is adopted, then this all, unit also uh, try to discuss on the academic skill development and learning disabilities. So altogether, we have four units in the first block, and uh, we are going to deal with the first block and the first unit that is biological development. Am I clear? Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Can you yes, see sir. the slides clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. Okay, okay. So we'll continue. So the first unit that is about the biological development. Okay. So each developmental stage has its own speciality. We know that. So we human beings, we are growing day by day and uh, we have attained almost uh, the uh, current. We have attained till the current developmental stage that we are in. And understanding the developmental psychology, the development throughout the lifespan from childhood to adulthood will help us to understand the client. So why do we learn this biological development? So we know that there will be a lot of problems that happens, challenges that happens from the uh, babyhood till the adolescent. And among that, there will be a lot of problems may arise during this period. So without having a proper understanding about the developmental stages and the development that happens in the uh, biological stage, definitely we won't be able to address the problems and deal with the problems of the client efficiently. That's why we are dealing and we are learning this particular paper and this particular unit as well. So we know the biological development, it is the, why uh, what's happening in that so there will, will be a lot of progressive changes in size in shape and a lot of functions will be having during this lifespan so we know that we all are an organism okay we all are belonging to an organism by which its genetic potentials that mean we call it as a genotype that is translated into functioning mature systems that is phenotype so the focus of this biological development is particularly during the infancy and childhood is that the scientific study of human development seeks to understand and explain how and why people change throughout life that's very important so we all are changing every day by day so why this change is happening why people change throughout their life so we should be able to understand through the scientific study of human development so this includes all aspects of human growth, including physical, emotional, intellectual, social, perceptual, and personality development. So we know that we are witnessing our uh, development day by day, and we, oh, what all things are surrounding us, we are having a regular touch with that. So that will help us to have our physical development, our emotional development, our intellectual, then our social, our perceptual. So that is related to the perception and the personality development. So we should be able to 
have a clear cut understanding of this biological development that is related to our body organism. So we should be able to classify our physical, emotional, intellectual, social and perceptual and personality development or the growth that we have and the client uh, so that the client will be helped from the social worker to have a better dealing with the problem okay then we are going to focus on human development what is the meaning of this human development so development always describes the growth of human beings throughout the lifespan we know that a person will be having a lifespan of uh, uh, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, even more than 100 years. All these lifespan will be covering the certain developmental periods, the developmental stages. So here, the development, the human development in its peripheral sense and its uh, uh, clear sense that shows that the development describes the growth of human beings throughout the lifespan. So development is defined as the orderly and sequential changes that occur with the passage of time as an organism move from conception to death. So it is defined as the development. What does the term def uh, mean? Uh, the development is defined as the orderly and sequential changes. Orderly and sequential changes. So the, the change the speciality, the particularity of the change that happens during the development is orderly and it has got a sequential. That means when something is there, when something is to influence a particular client change that happens, when uh, something is influencing a human being, change happens. So all these change that occur with the passage of time as an organism move from conception to death. So when a baby is born in the womb of a mother, from then till the death of that particular person, this change is happening. That's what is known as the development. Development occurs through processes that are biologically programmed with the organism that is nature. So there is a nature-nurture relationship. So uh, the nature, what does it mean is that development occurs through the processes that are biologically programmed within the organism. So it's already organized in a organism biological program that's already organized within the organism that is a nature so that happens naturally and the process of interaction with the environment when that organism when that person is getting in touch with the environment environment is nothing but where i belong to where i am surrounded with okay so the environment that is nurture so that transform the organism so our relationship with the environment that always transform the organism then change happens so we know that we always tell about our character our behavior right what is behavior then so each and every person from his birth till death he is changing he is developing he is in the process of development likewise his character his behavior everything is changing okay so we call when uh, realize we realize that okay so i am changing with when the environment changes i am also changes when a particular environment of uh, my uh, classroom that gives me a change when i am going to the church that environment gives me a change makes that transform my, me as an organism and i am changing there then when i go to the market i am changing likewise the behavior also changes so that's why we call this behavior is the result of the interaction between the biological organism and the environment. It's a wonderful definition. So we are changing. Our behavior itself is changing every day in many forms. When we go to a place, that environment uh, influences and transforms my behavior. When I go to some other places, when I travel in the bus, that again transforms my organism person as an organism then my character changes so the goal of development thus we understand the developmental process and the goal of development that is to enable people to adopt to the environment which they leave so environment is very important that is having the most influential part of a person's development so if you have a good environment definitely what's happening yeah the person will be good 
he can have a good development his intellectual his physical and all related growths are, are very good in nature okay so human development that is very much related to the environmental development so the, when the environment changes definitely the person the organism is transformed and changed okay so there are a lot of changes that happens in the lifespan okay so all these periods are or these uh, changes are very essential the understanding about all these uh, lifespan is very essential as social workers definitely we should know so uh, we are mingling with people not uh, in every category people belong to every category every age group so definitely defi definitely uh, we should be having the understanding about all these uh, stages in the lifespan okay so the first one is prenatal period prenatal okay so that is uh, the meaning of that particular period is the conception to birth so this period belong existing during the conception to birth when a baby when a fetus is formed in the womb of a mother the uterus and till the birth of that particular baby so the conception to birth that is prenatal period then the second stage is infancy that is birth to end of the second week okay so the first one is prenatal period that is conception to birth second one is infancy that is birth to end of the second week then the uh, third stage is babyhood the end of the second week to end of second year so it's a longer period we know that uh, from the second week of the infancy or birth to the second week from that time onwards the babyhood starts till the second year so the, when the baby is attaining uh, age of 2 definitely uh, till that period the baby uh, the particular baby period of stages in life is babyhood then the next one that is the fourth one is early childhood so that happens to to 6 years so we call it as the preschool years 2 to 6 years we call it as the preschool years then after that early childhood we know that the next stage is late childhood that is from 6 to 10 or 12 years so there is a uh, imbalance uh, that means the some uh, changes that happens during this period that's why it is 6 to 10 or 12 years so we call it as elementary school years elementary the first one is preschool years then the uh, late childhood that happens in the elementary school years then sixth stage is puberty or pre-adolescence puberty or pre-adolescence that happens from 10 to uh, 10 or 12 to 13 or 14 then years okay so here uh, 14 13 12 13 14 these are the ideal years of this puberty that happens for both uh, boys and girls uh, during we, we know that what happens during those time and uh, we will be di discussing that in coming uh, units then the next stage is adolescence that is 13 or 14 to 18 years from 13 or 14 till 18 years uh, a human being is in the stage of adolescence so that is the most challenging that is the most important stages in lifespan then after that all the stages in the lifespan is very important but the most challenging is adolescence that's what the experience and the uh, research tells then the next one is early adulthood that is 18 to 40 years then middle age 40 to 60 years then old age 60 years till death okay so these are the uh, 10 stages in the lifespan first one is prenatal period that happens from conception to birth second one is infancy that is birth to end of the second week then babyhood end of second week to end of second year then early childhood two to six years we call it as a preschool year then late childhood 6 to 10 or 12 years we call it as elementary school years 
then puberty or pre-adolescence, then or 12 or 13 or 14 years. Okay, to 13 or 14 years. Then adolescence, that is 13 or 14 to 18 years. Early adulthood, 18 to 40 years. Middle age, that is 40 to 60 years. Then old age, 60 years to death. So not all individuals reach these stages at the same time and not all pass through all of them. So there is a uh, something happens, we cannot pass all these stages, no? Some uh, one baby will die in the babyhood uh, and uh, the other one, a particular adolescent will die. So he won't be uh, entering into the early adulthood or even middle age. So we know that. So that's based on the fate of the person and the duration of his lifespan depends the passing of all these stages in the lifespan. So we should understand that each stage has problems that must be solved before the individual can progress to the next stage. So why do we have a detailed description or understanding about each stage by stage? Because the problem that varies from stage to stage, the developmental time to the other developmental time. So we have to deal the problem that happens in the infancy itself. Without dealing that problem, a child should not enter. A baby should not enter to the other one, the other stage. So if it is not dealt, what happens is there won't be a progressive, a qualitative growth will be possible for that particular human being. So we have to find, we have to identify the problem that happens in each stage and we have to solve, help the client or the baby or even the uh, whoever it be uh, we have to help them to solve the problem in that stage itself otherwise there will be a lot of challenges may have to face uh, by the particular human being in all through the lifespan so we should not let them uh, in the problem so we have to help them to address and adjust the problem in each stage that's why we are dealing with stage by stages okay so there are a lot of developmental tasks uh, in uh, the human development so we have got a wonderful description about all these things in our text material hope you have uh, got the material and you have at least once or twice you have gone through the material as well uh, i'm not sure about it but still uh, it's a difficult task to go through all the uh, pages in the uh, textbook but i'm just pointing out the main important points in these two hours of time to complete the first block and i'll try my best to finish the first block in these two hours the summary only the summary will be discussed here okay so we know that uh, that we are moving on to the domains of human development now. So, can you all follow me? Hello? Yes, Am I too forced? Am I clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we are going to discuss the... Is there any one from other states apart from Kerala? Anyone out? from Kerala? Yes, sir, I'm from Delhi. I want to use <laughs> yes, my own mother tongue. Okay. Sir, got, got a bunch from Delhi. Mm. Ah, yeah, I understand. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the information. Okay. So, domains of human development that we're discussing now. So, uh, what are the domains human of human development that includes the physical, the cognitive, the emotional and social development? Okay. So, first we deal with the uh, physical development. The physical development is that changes that occurs in person's body. Okay, so the physique, we call it as a physique. And what are changes that happens in an organism, a person's body, that is related to the physical development. Then the physical development that involves changes that occur in a person's body, including changes in weight, his height, the brain, the heart, and other organ structures, and processes and skeletal, muscular, and neurological features that affect motor skills. 
So all these things are included in this physical development, the way we uh, move, the way we think, the way we, our heart works, functions, and all the things, our weight, our height, our uh, changes that happens in the biological features, everything is included in this particular development stage. And this physical growth, that perhaps the most obvious. So we can witness it, we can see it, it's very clear. Okay, so if we uh, uh, constantly observe it, baby, we can easily understand what are the things that happens in the physical development of that particular baby. Okay, so there is nothing more to tell about this. Uh, we understand, we witness, we know very well about all this physical development. Then the second one, domain of human development is the cognitive development that changes that occur in mental activity. Cognition is nothing but the ability to think. That is related to our thinking pattern. So thinking is nothing but it is the ability to reason it, whether it's right for me or whether it's uh, not good for me. So that's what's happening in the cognitive development, the changes that occur in the mental activity. So that's something related to the uh, uh, mental functioning. Okay, so the cognitive uh, changes that includes our sensation, our perception, the memory, our thought, reasoning and language. Then this uh, domain particularly focuses on our learning, our attention, our perception and memory. So that's all these are the mental activity or mental abilities. If there is any challenges occurring within these particular areas, that will be a problem that happens in the cognitive development. So we have to assess, we have to understand whether the child or the adolescent is having the uh, proper mental functioning, whether the child can remember things, whether the, ch the action and the thinking and the action is in organized or not, etc, etc. All these things are happening in the cognitive development. Then the next one is the psychological or emotional development. So that changes in an individual's personality. Okay, emotions and relationship with others. So we uh, always observe others and we are telling that his personality is not much appreciated. His personality is not good for me. It is not well accepted by others. Why? Because the problems that happens in the personality structure or the uh, emotional aspects of that particular person. So the changes should be there and the changes should be positive in the personality, in the emotions and the relationship. All these things are very important, the personality, the emotions and the relationship with others. So how I am having a good emotion to the other one, how I am conveying my emotions, uh, whether it is based on the exact situation, or not so is my uh, relationship with my family is uh, healthy very good my friend the relationship that i am having with my uh, friend is uh, in the correct uh, wavelength or not etc etc all these things are based on the psychological or emotional development as a personality that is a huge uh, area where we have to focus a lot. So all the problems that is happening uh, in a person uh, that is taken for psychological study, even for psychiatric treatments or psychiatric disorders like personality disorders, we know that three clusters. Hope you have heard about all these personality disorders or emotional and uh, disorders. Then again, the problem with the relationship so we should segregate all these things and each these three are very much related and that gives a, the fruit of life, the fruit in the life of a human being. So we should have a better personality. We should have a good conveyance of emotions, uh, communication of emotions, and we should have a strengthy and healthy relationship with our environment and with everyone. So if is it so definitely we can call it as a uh, the development that happens in the psychological and emotional level is very strong okay then the social development that deals with the adjustment to the people with others and to learn the right ways of interaction 
So socially, we know that since we all are human beings and social beings, we have to adjust with people. We have to interact with the people in the right way. If something happens in this area, our development, social development is not is not in the right track. So we have to understand that. So this social development is very much important uh, how we interact with the other one. So this domain it contains the adjustment in variables within social institutions. So our personality research, social skills and developing relationships, all these things are very much included in this social development. Okay, so that's about the domains of human development. Then we move on to the next title that is prenatal development. The prenatal period or the pregnancy that is with the duration of approximately nine months begin from conception to birth. So this is the very important stage. It's a beginning stage. It is the very initial stage. So this here, a new life starts with fertilization, the union of an ovum and a sperm that results in the formation of a zygote. So before they are ready to produce, a new individual's male sex cells must go through two preliminary stages, that is maturation and fertilization. Then the female sex cells must go through the preliminary stages, that is maturation and ovulation and even fertilization. So the maturation, what does it mean? We know that we all, all have crossed that uh, maturation, that is the process of chromosome reduction through cell division, maturation of sex cells, occurs with sexual maturity. So ovulation is the preliminary stage of development of female sex cells during which the two ovaries produce a ripe ovum alternatively during each menstrual cycle. So we know that the menstrual cycle, what happens in each cycle, the duration of the cycle, when there is a change that happens in the cycle, what will happen, everything is very much aware by uh, we all are of offspring, the baby's ordinal position in the family, all these are determined there. So here, the influence, all these things influence the individual's later development. So the prenatal period is divided into three subdivisions. It has got three subdivisions. First one is the period of zygote. So that extends from the conception to the end of the second week. And the fertilized egg is known as a zygote. Okay, the period of zygote, the prenatal development, the prenatal period is divided into three subdivisions. First one is a period of zygote, so that extends from conception to the end of the second week, and the fertilized egg is known as a zygote. Then the next uh, subdivision is the period of embryo that extends from the end of the second week to the end of the second lunar month. During this period, the major organs and features are formed. So in the period of embryo, the, uh, or the formation of the organs is happening. Uh, if we Google and if we go to the YouTube, we will be having wonderful videos that will clearly help us to understand what's happening, the changes that are happening in this prenatal development. The third subdivision is the period of fetus, which extends from the end of second lunar month to birth. From this period until uh, birth, the fetus grows and puts on weight. Okay, so here the baby is formed and the baby is putting weight in his physique, in his organs. The period of embryo is usually regarded as a critical time because the physical, because of the physical features which are then developing rapidly can be distorted by unfavorable conditions in the prenatal environments. We know that the first three months is very crucial for a pregnant woman. Why? If something happens that will be uh, there will be a lot of complications that even will affect the development during the prenatal period or even after that the mental functioning of the baby will be affected so considering all these uh, we have to be very careful in the first three months every months are very much important but still it's very crucial we know that okay these are the three subdivisions of prenatal 
development. Okay, so here I can show you uh, some pictures. The period of embryo, that is the end of the second week to the end of the second lunar month. During this period, major organs and features are formed. So this is the, the picture clearly indicates the, uh, the uh, situation or the condition of the baby in the womb. Then the period of fetus, see here, the fetus grows and puts on weight. Period of fetus, then infancy, we move on to the infancy now. So here uh, in the text, if we go through, definitely we can have additional load of information regarding the prenatal environmental influences. Uh, in a table, we can see the name of the diseases that is, uh, there is a chance of diseases that happens in the, this particular prenatal environment. We know that rubella, measles, etc. Rubella, then the chlamydia, that's a kind of a STA, sexual transmission diseases then what will happen if a mother is suffering from rubella in uh, prenatal uh, period the risk will be stillbirths miscarriages or prematurity mental retardation substantial risk of blindness deafness brain damage heart disease etc so there is a chance of chlamydia that is sta that's a sexually transmitted infection if that is affected affected uh, to the uh, pregnant woman what will happen there is a chance of premature delivery in case of vaginal childbirth conjunctivitis or blindness or even pneumonia will be uh, happening then then trichomoniasis that's a susceptibility to hiv infection premature delivery and a low birth weight baby then the other condition the name of the disease is human papilloma virus that is hpv that can cause genital warts birth defects in a baby due to the use of dangerous uh, creams then syphilis that is a kind of bacterial infection that may occur during the prenatal period then genital herbs that will also lead to a miscarriage risk of getting disease in case of vaginal childbirth then gonorrhea, that's a kind of uh, sexual disease, uh, sexually transmitted disease that can create uh, risk of getting diseases in a case of vaginal childbirth, conjunctivitis or even pneumonia. Then diabetes, that may lead to miscarriage, uh, intrauterine death, congenital malformation, uh, including neutral tube defects, then labor and delivery complications, uh, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome etc then maternal sensitization that's an uh, rh factor that can cause uh, erythroblastosis fetals the fatal form for a form of anemia mental retardation and jaundice in the fetus or newborn then smoking during the prenatal that will cause prematurity and low birth weight then use of alcohol the consumption of alcohol that can cause fetal alcohol spectrum disorder a cluster of severe physical and mental defects caused by alcohol damage to the developing fetus then uh, oral contraceptive drugs and other chemicals that can cause abnormalities in the internal organs uh, stenting or complete absence of arms legs and uh, fingers heart defects facial uh, disfiguration, mental retardation, and attention deficits, and sudden infant death syndrome. Then the radiation that happens in the prenatal period can cause uh, spontaneous abortion. Then age of the mother, that is another risk factor. If the age is high, that means the higher risk of, that can cause higher risk of infant defect, prematurity and infant death so a lot of complications uh, the conditions and its uh, complications are given here then environmental factors will be there during this period that has got a uh, effective uh, influence on the mother that is environmental factors include physical psychological and social factors physical factors include nutrition there is maternal illness physical activity drug intake alcohol maternal age 
outside environmental hazards all these are all these are very general things and very common things we are having a idea about all these things so please uh, read the course material carefully and understand the things then the prenatal care is there the prenatal care that refers to the care and attention given to the pregnant women okay the care and attention that given to the uh, pregnant woman is called the prenatal care so i've already told that the initial period the first stage of the life is very 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 important so we have to give adequate care and attention to the pregnant woman that is the prenatal care that includes medical in educational social and nutritional service the problem with that we face uh, during this stage to deal with a client in this particular stage is the lack of education so if uh, that person belongs to a remote place or low background low education background definitely we have to educate them all these things should be taken care of so these are the problems that may uh, happen during this uh, prenatal period we have to make them aware the uh, situations the conditions the uh, after effect of the problems everything we have to educate them that's very important then social and nutrition services are there then it ensures the well-being of the mother and the baby and enables the baby to enter into the world in a good condition so why do we care why do we give uh, a great care a huge care and uh, support or even attention to the pregnant woman needs we are helping the baby to uh, enter into a world with a good condition a good physique a good mental uh, capacity so we need that each and every baby should born with the full strength whether it's a uh, social whether it's a uh, physical whether it's psychological we have to have the child with all the potentials okay then we have to give medical care that is that includes the regular checkup and a scanning help to detect the defects and the uh, at the earliest abiding by medical advice ensures the good health of the mother and the baby so how many scans will be there during the pregnancy period anybody knows hello nobody is there Yes, sir. We are here. Yeah, how many scans will be there during the pregnancy? One, two, four, sir. Four. Three to four. F uh, first scan will happen which period of the pregnancy? Third month. Third month. Okay. Then the next one? Fifth month, sir. Fifth month. Then the next one? Seventh month. Seventh or even eighth? Eighth. Okay. And end of the delivery. Yeah, end of the delivery. Yeah. definitely when we the woman is admitted in the hospital yeah they are doing it so totally four scans will be there and uh, the problem with the overseas you know what will happen if anybody has an experience of overseas during this pregnancy and delivery So no let sir tell, let me tell you it's a very challenging one so in india especially in kerala in delhi or in tamil nadu uh, the things will be taken care of very well but if we go to uh, uk or even canada the things will not be that much appreciated uh, the care and treatment that is given to a uh, baby so they will consider only the during the uh, fifth month of the pregnancy the baby is grown i've told you know the baby is putting weight the baby is growing then only they will consider the baby the woman as a pregnant so there is a chance of complications during the first 3 months so after that during the fifth month they will be giving additional care till then so they are in a doubt whether the baby is okay or not so no proper care and support will be given to the pregnant woman they are giving but it's not as efficient as that we have in our india so we have experienced we have uh, heard the experiences of many indian women who uh, have had an experience of becoming pregnant and uh, giving birth to uh, child children in overseas 
So we cannot run to the hospital when an emergency happens. We have to wait them to get an appointment. We have to uh, convince them that that much of emergency is with that particular woman. So we have to cry sometimes. Okay, then only they will be giving an appointment. First, we have to go to the uh, general surgery. That the, We have got a particular clinic called in our surroundings, that is GP. We have to book them. Then they have to, if they are convinced well, they will be transferring us to uh, the hospital. The hospital, when we go to the hospital, we are not much welcomed there because a lot of procedures, we have to wait them for a long time here. No problem of waiting at all. If a pregnant woman is having any problem, then and there they will be taken to the IZ or even to the uh, emergency ward. But there we have to wait along. Okay, so the care and support that we give to the pregnant woman during the in prenatal period is very, 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 very important. Okay, so the medical care. So uh, the other thing is that we can have uh, now here it is illegal. What the sex, sexual determination that is, we cannot have a uh, provision to know whether uh, the baby is a boy or girl here. But in uh, overseas, they are happy to uh, tell it, reveal it. But most of the Indian parents, they will be telling that, okay, no, I don't want to. Okay, so they will be. Uh, make it as a surprise. They want to hold that surprise till the birth of that baby. But they are happy. They will be. They can. They have the provisions to uh, reveal the sex, sex, uh, what kind of sex, the gender of that particular baby. Okay. So the medical care is very important. Then the educational care. That means the pre-pregnancy and the pregnancy counseling that is very much helpful. So in most of the hospitals that we have in India, they're giving wonderful counseling to the uh, woman. So that will be uh, helping the person to uh, have good ideas, to have uh, more knowledge about uh, the care and the things, the do's and don'ts, etc. Then uh, they will be getting additional information regarding the exercises that we do, the rest time, the way that we lie down in the bird, uh, the information regarding their nutrition, then self-care, the importance of self-care, sex during pregnancy. So people are having a lot of misconceptions regarding this. Uh, sex during pregnancy, a lot of misconceptions. So why do we learn this particular uh, subject in this MSW course? The important purpose is to, we have to understand, we have to know the things and we have to give the knowledge. We have to share the knowledge to the other one. Okay, so we have to know first uh, all the details regarding the developmental stages. That's why we are learning it in the four blocks. And then we have to convey, we have to educate the people who are having a uh, low educational background. So here, coping with the discomforts of pregnancy, preparation of birth, all these things are very much educated uh, through the pregnant woman. Then the physical care should be there. That is also, that includes the uh, proper nutrition, then the sufficient rest, being free from environment and pollution, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then the psychological care, that is mother's emotional well-being. This, that's something very important. So now we we know that whatever happens uh, to the mother that during the pregnancy that will definitely affect the child. Okay, whether it's a mental agony, that's a, any disturbances, any depression, any stress, if that is not uh, confronted time to time, that will definitely affect the child. The psychological care is very important then. So proper. Uh, relaxation techniques will be given to the uh, pregnant woman, a healthy family ambience, atmosphere uh, will be provided. So the person has to be free from too much of tension, conflicts, quarrels, etc. Uh, then the relationship with others should be very healthy. Okay, all these are very much important when we uh, talk about this psychological care then the social care that is a favorable attitude of the mother and the family towards pregnancy social support then good socio-economic status 
high level of education of parents and then the positive attitude of siblings and grandparents towards pregnancy the willingness to accept the baby irrespective of its sex uh, are significant you know i've already spoken about this uh, sex determination you know what happened what will happen so the problem that we face before is female infanticide but now that is legally stopped and and there is no provision of knowing the gender before the birth in india if it is done by a doctor or anyone that's a crime okay so here uh, we are whether it's a boy or a girl it's a gift of god that's a thing that we have to understand we have to receive that gift with our full uh, thanks and our all hearted uh, life okay then all these social factors that again there will be uh, the prenatal care is often not evenly distributed poverty illicit pregnancy all these are very much uh, important issues poverty and illicit uh, pregnancy unwanted pregnancy so a lot of things are there so that is comes in the social uh, care so we have to understand and we have to help them to uh, overcome all these problems and we have to have a very good uh, uh, chance to give delivery for a good healthy baby okay so the next stage that we are going to deal is infancy <clears throat> so infancy so according to this medical terminology infancy is a young child a, an infant is a young child so there is no specific age limit for when the individual ceases to be an infant and becomes a child so there is no age age limit so we can call them as a child we can call them as an infant in that area uh, that particular uh, period the word infant suggests extreme fragile therefore helplessness so the term shows that the uh, infant is uh, very helpless very dependent okay so here during this period the newborn's complete helplessness gradually gives a way to increasing independence infancy is the shortest of all developmental period so when we think of all these uh, uh, developmental stages 10 developmental stages infancy is the shortest of uh, all developmental periods it's a at the same time it is the time of uh, radical adjustment the infancy period is a plate in development the growth and development that took place during prenatal period suddenly come to a stop with birth okay so the growth and development that took place during prenatal period come to an end come to have a stop by the birth of the baby the infant loses weight after birth you know that how many of you know that the birth will be reduced after birth pardon sir how many of you whether the birth increases or decreases immediately after birth decreases sir may decreases yeah it decreases you know why because why? the excess excess water uh, comes out uh, not only a uh, baby has to adapt to the exactly the baby has to adapt and adjust the outside environment till then the baby was in the womb the mother eats the baby gets food but after the birth what will happen the baby has to sir after the birth the baby food. has to adapt to the surroundings as yeah, well as the environment the feeding is also reduced so Are there should be a proper automatic? social and psychological development with the baby so uh, i have got an experience that when my baby was born in the first uh, uh, days immediately after the birth the weight was 2.700 2 kg 700 grams and then it starts to reduce the first day after birth 
the baby's weight reduces to 300 grams. That is really abnormal in the sense that not us unusual. And uh, then the next day, again, 100 grams. Then slowly, the amount of decreasing weight is getting low and the baby starts to put up weight. So the doctor suggests that till the baby gets in an increase in the weight, we have to stay in the hospital. It was a normal delivery, no problem way there, but only the problem is with the breastfeeding. So the it takes time to uh, get the best breast milk during the first delivery. That's what I think and, what, and that's what I heard uh, from the doctors. It takes time. And for some women, definitely there are. A good amount of milk can be given, produced to the baby. And for some, it won't be possible during that time. So they will suggest the formulas like Similac, uh, the other one, Nanpro, etc., etc. A lot of things are there. So they will start to feed proportionally. Sometime half an hour, try to, they have to give 20 minutes of breastfeeding. If the child stomach is not full, we have to give formula apart from that. So that is the uh, usual thing that's uh, uh, idea given to given by the doctor to improve the weight increase. Okay, so the infancy. So uh, here the growth and development that took place during prenatal period uh, suggests suddenly come to an uh, end with the birth. The infant loses weight after birth, but at the end of this period, infant again starts gaining weight. Okay, so infancy is considered as a hazardous period in terms of physical and psychological adjustment. There will be a chance of a lot of hazards that can cause the physical and psychological maladjustments. Okay, uh, so there may be something that we have to know. The infant must make four major adjustments before they can resume their developmental progress. Okay. So this is the short description about the infancy. This is the shortest of all developmental periods and it covers approximately the first two weeks of life. I've already spoken all these things, but still for you, I'm reading it out. During the period, the newborn's complete helplessness gradually gives away to increasing independence. Infancy is the shortest of all development periods and it's a time of radical adjustment. So it is considered as a saddest period in terms of physical and psychological adjustment. Okay, so here the developmental, uh, I've uh, just now I told you that the infants must be, uh, must make four major adjustments before they can resume their developmental program. First one is adjusting to the temperature changes. Okay, so there is constant temperature of 100 degree F in the uterine, while temperature in the hospital or home may be vary from 60 to 70 degree okay the temperature adjustment then that has to be adjusted by the baby when it's in the womb there will be 100 degree f then when it comes out 60 to 70 either in the hospital or in the home then a breathing the umbilical cord is when the umbilical cord is cut the infant must starts to breathe on its own that's another adjustment the child has the baby has to practice then the sucking and swallowing. The infant must get nourishment by sucking and swallowing instead of receiving it through the umbilical cord. These reflexes are imperfectly developed at birth and the infant often gets less nourishment that is needed and thus loses weight. So I've told you, you know, just now I've told my experiences, you know, the child is not able to suck. Okay. Maybe because of the lack of practice when the child is getting practiced with the things he uh, or she or they, it starts to uh, have, have the milk properly with full stomach. Okay. Otherwise, that takes time for the child to practice. It's a kind of reflexes. Then the elimination, the other adjustmental problem that's elimination. The infant's organs of elimination begin to work soon after birth. Formerly, waste products were eliminated through umbilical cord. So during the pregnancy, the waste products will be uh, eliminated. They were eliminated through the umbilical cord. But after that, the child has to practice by the organs. Okay. 
then lot of physical hazards that may be there in uh, the infancy what are the hazards unfavorable prenatal environment so we were talking about that what are things should be taken care of during the pregnancy whatever is opposite whatever is existing as an opposite to the that that has to be considered as an unfavorable prenatal environment so that's a prolonged and intense maternal stress excessive smoking on the part of the mother for example we can tell so that can cause a lot of problem i've told you the problem okay so what will happen that may can cause a uh, breathing problem to the baby even mental problems like mental retardation etc okay so the unfavorable prenatal environment that is the first physical hazard then the second one is complications of pregnancy so what could be the normal complications can anyone tell can anyone tell what are the usual complications of pregnancy we know all these things but please hello please contribute the information from your part complications of pregnancy so vomiting tendency yeah that's a persistent vomiting there will be vomiting tendency but if that goes beyond the a uh, usual thing that can be that's called as the persistent vomiting then what else swelling diabetes yeah diabetes could be there then swelling swelling exactly swelling mood swings sorry mood swings blood pressure mood swings yeah diabetes. definitely the variation that happens with the blood pressure variation sir sorry sorry sir urinary infections yeah utis urinary tract infections weight gain sir hmm weight gain blood pressure weight gain yeah excessive amount of weight that can cause then high bp high bp that's already told then age maternal age that could be a problem if the mother under 18 or above 35 there is a risk that is the signs and the medical signs tells okay a mother under 18 or above 35 sorry decrease the decrease the hemoglobin levels yeah then there sometimes vag vaginal bleeding will be there so that is the most common thing you know bleeding vaginal bleeding that can cause complication then the multiple birth multiple birth that's a problem you know what is uh, ectopic pregnancy what is that stretch marks sorry stretch marks stretch marks yeah that's uh, yes. not a big issue if that okay. happens to the stomach of that mother it's not a big issue stretch marks will be there then poor nutrition then the drug use especially cigarette or even alcohol to avoid stress during the uh, pregnancy period that can cause big stress to the mother that can create complication to the child then illness during the some associative illness during the pregnancy all these are the complications then uh, other one the next complication is birth complications what are the birth complications that can occur if baby's position is not correct then mm. it may create problem okay preterm babies preterm delivery premature delivery then I mean, in rural area, unhygienic uh, issues. Hmm. Yeah, that means uh, that's some other factor. But birth complications. Uh, decrease in amniotic fluid level. Okay. Sir, excessive bleeding. Yeah, that's in the complication of pregnancy. That means uh, when the baby is in the womb. So birth complications when it happens during the birth or even after the birth.
so if baby is a position of uh, some birth complications they can suggest what cesarean okay so birth complications can necessitate birth by cesarean so if the, the doctor finds during the scan that the baby is not in the position or if some problem is happening the umbilical cord is over the uh, neck of the baby something like that they can uh, even the water level is low or even over than the uh, required amount of water so then the doctor suggests that the baby's health is not in a good condition and the mother will be also having some problem due to that then they can suggest cesarean so that's the birth complication so that will be uh, we know that a lot of things are there as you told then the fourth one that is multiple birth so now we are discussing about the physical hazards the fourth hazard is multiple birth what is that multiple birth more than one two child children hmm so it's not a usual but still there are multiple birth are usually uh, happening and uh, the explanation that is given is children of multiple birth are usually smaller and weaker than singletons as a result of crowding during prenatal period so which inhibits fetal movement these babies tend to be born prematurely which adds to their adjustmental problem so when there is more than one fetus or one baby definitely there is chance of premature delivery okay so the there will be a lot of adjustment problem uh, that is added to the uh, babies that got birth prematurely so that's a hazard then post maturity is there post maturity what is that post maturity so when it is considered as a hazard only when the fetus becomes so large okay the fetus becomes so large the birth requires the use of instruments or surgery so if the uh, physique of that particular baby is very big there is a chance of cesarean or even surgery so that's a post maturity risk mm, then prematurity what is that prematurity we know that before completing the that pregnancy period there is a chance so here the prematurity causes more neonatal death than any other condition so prematurity causes more neonatal death than any other condition the major risk is uh, neonatal death a major risk factor for newborns in low birth weight so we know that we have uh, witnessed we have experienced from many people that uh, if the baby is getting premature delivery uh, premature birth so there is a chance of very 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 low birth weight either from intra uterine growth retardation or prematurity birth before 38 weeks is usually it is 38 weeks and birth before the 38 weeks there is a problem premature babies face many many uh, problems such as breathing problem feeding problem then there is a chance of jaundice birth defects so uh neutral neural tube defect chromosomal abnormalities like lot of things will be there then prematurely born babes uh usually experience complications in adjusting to the postnatal environment and uh, they may be, have a serious effect on future adjustment so we have to take care of the babies very carefully uh, such kind of babies very carefully otherwise they problem will be very 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 uh, the development will be very challenging and it will be full for, full of hazards so we have to understand the physical hazards in infancy okay so the physical development in babyhood that has been given there uh, there is a particular table in the text you can go through that the girls and boys then the measurements the girls standing height in centimeters in the during the birth is 49.9 the normal uh, birth height of a girl that is 49.9 cm then the weight in kilogram that is 3.2 that's a normal then 3 months during the 3 months it goes like that 3 months 6 months 9 months the amount is given there then if it's a boy uh, the birth 
uh, centimeter could be 50.5 and the weight during 3.3 okay so then it increases when it is three months six months nine months etc okay so that you have to have an idea about that then what other things are happening the development the teeth uh, the teeth when a baby is getting the uh, sorry the physical proportion that we have to understand the baby's proportion change during the first two years the size of an infant's head decreases in proportion from one third of the entire body at birth to one fourth at stage two uh, at the age two and one th one eighth by the adulthood then what about the bones the number of bones increases during babyhood then the ossification begins the early part of the first year uh, but it is not completed uh, until puberty so the likewise we can have the body builds the teeth when it is getting formed the development of brain everything is there so we have to read and understand okay so now we move on to the next that is babyhood due to lack of time okay i'm just moving to the other one babyhood so there are a lot of information given in the text you have to read and understand it so lot of lot of information okay just understand so the unit 2 in the text we can see uh, one second Yeah, the psychological development in infancy and childhood. So what is ha uh, happening during this period, uh, especially in the infancy and childhood, how the psychological uh, efficiencies are getting developed, all these things are there. Please understand, read and understand that one as well. Okay, so we move on to the next stage that is babyhood. So there are a lot of informations in the text. What other things are happening during the, uh, the cognitive uh, development, psychological development, physical development that is given there. So please understand all those things. So I'm just trying to find out babyhood. Where is that? So far, any doubts you have? No, sir. Any doubts? So no, we have sir. discussed in no, two sir. stages. Any doubts or any clarification? Sir, sir, please give five minutes break, sir. <laughs> okay, okay. Take the five minutes. Overloading, sir, of the material. Yeah, I understand. I understand. It's very difficult to take the online classes. I do understand that. So you can have a five minutes of break. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. If you see, we can discuss the general uh, uh, perception about this MSW because now the exams are uh, around the corner, another week or so, and uh, covering syllabus. I think this is just a exercise which personally we only have to cover it up uh, most of the time, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's so, true. So, yeah. what the instruction that we have got from the senders is that just giving the clarification because we are getting only less time. <laughs> Uh, two hours each for one module or even one block that is not sufficient enough to take the classes to cover the entire text 
I don't agree with that. But, but the problem, the problem is that, you know, you have to understand, uh, you have to read everything and you have to ask the clarification. That's what we do during the counseling session. It's a, not a teaching session, actually, it's a counseling session. Okay, so it's you know that it's in the regular uh, students. We are taking this subject or this one subject. Uh, yes, sir. We understand that. We under yes, sir. We understand that. Yeah. Uh, maybe like the, what uh, generally as a learners, uh, we want to know beyond uh, MSW counseling. Now, what is beyond this? Yeah, tell me. So, yeah, tell me. Uh, ask me. Yeah. Uh, syllabus will cover it up, sir. And uh, getting a degree and uh, from IGNO, yes, uh, syllabus is vast and we will cover it up. Sir. We just want to know what is beyond it, sir. Now, how to get into the market or um, how to utilize this uh, knowledge or uh, uh, are there a market ready or do we need to just again struggle before we get into the system, sir? So you're talking about the profession, the chance of the profession. Uh, of the, the yes, of sir, the yes, sir. Yes, of course. Yes, sir. Beyond, beyond uh, uh, after doing that MSW, once we have de a degree in our hand. So, yeah. and uh, uh, how is the competitive so, market and general yeah, layout? Gen yeah, yeah. Let me tell something that it's very difficult to get recognized with this degree to our society. <laughs> the lack of recognition is very important there. That's the issue that we face. That's why we are struggling to get recognized by the government first. So there are a lot of associations working a lot for, to get addressed by the government. We have got, uh, in Kerala, we got Kerala Association of Professional Social Workers. So they are struggling to have uh, the government uh, to include the vacancies that happens in the government sector for MSW students through the government notifications. Uh, usually, you know, for example, when they need a counselor, what they are giving is a candidate. Psychology. Yeah, yeah the yeah. candidate with psychology degree, either in BAC or MSc psychology. So when, if that the situation, how a social worker can apply? So they do not know. They do not know what we have learned during the classes because the ignorance about the course is there, the profession is there. So slowly it is uh, getting removed and enlightened by the government. So there will be a chance. So now they started to include social workers, particularly for Kudumbasri activities, uh, then some sort of counseling centers. So they started to recruit people. But what we, what I suggest is that, you know, uh, we have to, if uh, with the degree, what you have in your act and from the knowledge that you have and the experiences that you learn from the, uh, both the theory and uh, practical classes, you have to study your own. So the major areas that we have to work as a social worker in health field. So I think in almost all the hospitals, they are recruiting social workers, medical social workers. And in the community development sectors, they are recruiting uh, social workers with a less salary. It's not a big salary. And that's another problem that we face. Once we get the recognition, maybe the problem, the remuneration will be getting solved. That's what I believe. I don't know exactly, but still. Uh, then, so people are looking. I, for, for me, my experience tells that, so I've uh, uh, taught many students and most of the students are trying to go abroad with MSW. But one thing that you have to understand is uh, the degree certificate that you have here, that you get from Indian universities, that is not sufficient enough for you to get a well-paid social worker job in uh, countries like UK or even Canada. You have to do additional courses that may be postgraduate diploma courses uh, from their own universities under their own, uh, what do you call, course structure. 
and you have to get registration from their own country if you want to work as a social worker in uk you have to get the social work england registration likewise you have to work in canada you need their registration so that is not an easy task to get a registration so that's first you have to find whether is my area what could be my area so you have to focus on that you have to uh, get maximum knowledge and experience in that area then you have to move it's very challenging it's very challenging no doubt uh, thanks sir because now this is our second year and the first year onwards we have been uh, trying to gauge the mood of the society or matlab how we will be accepted in society beyond Uh, our degree so yeah. even being in a, yeah being in metros also we find uh, same as you said that uh, salary structure is not that uh, lucrative to begin yeah. with so, yeah. so uh, we may consider ourselves professionals and uh, doing this masters but end of the day society is still not into it as you said that uh, clinical psychology or the uh, psychological people has a advantage into in this field even so mm. yeah then the other, another thing is that you know you are doing it uh, distance in the distance mode so the again the chance is getting less that's what i know i believe because the regular students are getting uh, 100 percentage of classroom uh, and the syllabus is covered thoroughly and properly their practicum is getting completed very clearly and they are having more exposure than the distance student that's also we have to yes sir. this is very practical so because most of the learners uh, like i can say for myself are working uh, people so uh, this is just a add on a degree for them just to maybe enhance their career into the same field or maybe to change their careers so we have a work also we have normally Uh, there are the people balance. with the different age brackets also people have already families so mm. they uh, their chances of taking risk in the new field also uh, reduces significantly with the age so maybe we'll just see sir how it goes on okay so uh, we... anybody else they can ask yeah is there anyone so who I, wants to yeah, know something I, I, yeah i didn't want to hijack the conversation this <laughs> that's good because what you have asked is true i understand that so anyone else with any question sir i have a doubt uh, uh, relating to the question define the meaning of human development and explain different domains is there a need for uh, explaining the each stages of life span in this question yeah you have to give a brief description about it uh, then uh, domains of human development uh, simple explanation only needed yeah because the if we take the entire portion as per the course material that is not enough because uh, we have to give the as brief as possible but the point should not be missed and we have to give a uh, point and one or two or three lines explanation for each points okay, because you. it includes a lot of things okay, okay. thank you sir okay so we continue and we have uh, covered the infancy second stage and now we move on to the babyhood that is the other stage excuse me sir yeah sir i just have a small doubt yeah sir the course schedule which we have been sent through our emails uh, uh, uh there is no counseling sessions of any practical subjects uh, so that you have to get information from the senders which will be the center you have to mail them and you have to get clarification because we won't be able to tell much about this practicum 
Okay, sir. Because uh, the main thing is. Where are you uh, from? Where are you from? From Delhi, sir. Oh. So we can't do anything here. If it's in Kerala, definitely we would have to give some idea. <laughs> okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, so sir, we you don't are... know what the situation there. Okay. That's why. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. So I got surprised when I heard that uh, there will be students from out of Kerala. So I was thinking that why why it happens. So there is no one to teach them because that will be more helpful. No, a person from your own area or your own experiences can teach you well. So we can just give you something related to our own experiences. I don't know why it is not happening. Well, uh, India, India is a diverse country with you know all those Sorry? stuff. So I Sorry? said, uh, I said that's 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 India. <laughs> okay, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Since it's like India, it happens like this. <laughs> okay, so we move on to the next one. That is babyhood. So the babyhood, that's a particular period that extends from the end of second week to the end of the second year of life. Then that is a true foundation age and a time of rapid growth and a change and decreased dependency. So it's a time uh, that we realize the sex role typing and creativity. So physical development refers to biological changes. So the physical development that happens in babyhood that refers to the biological changes. Uh, that children undergo as they grow. So we know that there is no need of any explanation. Then it is an appealing and hazardous age. Like other stages, definitely this is also very appealing and hazardous. Okay. So what are the physical hazards in babyhood? Physical hazards, first one is illness. What kind of illness will be there as an hazard? What kind of as a, uh, illness will be there during babyhood? Cholera. Cholera. Then, Sir, a lot of infectious diseases do happen yeah. to infants because their Infection. immunity is very weak. Very good. Because why it happens? Why there is uh, uh, antibodies are not being developed, sir. So, so we know so that. That's why they succumb to the various uh, infections prevailing in the atmosphere. So, and moreover, different people touching them, different people uh, taking them in their laps. So they tend mm -hmm. to catch the uh, infection very easily. And moreover, with the if they are and second most important habit because they catch infection is everything they try to put in their mouth. Hmm. Yes, exactly. So, because that's the thing. Uh, here, what's happening is so a lot of causes are there to get illness. So we know that. Uh, we all just just coming uh, or just uh, witnessed a great pandemic, world pandemic, that is COVID. So people were very much vigilant, a lot of education, a lot of uh, extra care were given to everyone in the world itself. Social distancing. We were practicing social distancing. How, how do you justify that, social distancing? Was it good? Social distancing? Yeah. Mm. So we were very much concerned about our baby as well, right? We were very much concerned because there, uh, to some extent, there were no tests, there were no uh, hospital admission given to the kids. Everybody were focusing on the adults. You know why? They are the carriers of COVID. Because they go out of the family, they come and go out of the family every day. But they were practicing, they were asked us to do social just, uh, distancing. But still, the number of COVID infections were increasing, the death rate were increasing everywhere, including in India. So, spread of disease, the conveys of diseases. The, like the oh, someone has already shared their idea that our students are least bothered about things, right? 
you know when we get into the hospital now the there are certain rules strictly followed by the hospitals that we have to wear mask when we get into the hospital but for the kids it's not possible right the naughty kid the mischievous kid the it is not possible for him to wear the mask so there is a chance then as he said he goes uh, to many people familiar and non familiar people then there is a chance then the prominent way of uh, catching things or having things through his mouth then the infected things will go to the mouth and the child is getting illness so here babies are born with some natural immunity uh, to the illnesses like uh, rubella or even measles mumps polio diphtheria there are a lot of uh, immunity issues related uh, diseases but babies are very susceptible, susceptible to uh, upper respiratory infections like cold bronchitis and pneumonia so the illnesses like pneumonia then bronchitis are very much prevalent in this particular uh, has a uh, stage so there is a chance of getting this disease is high then apart from that meningitis bacterial infection uh, etc are very common or hazardous to the babies in this particular age period so it's a, uh, we have to understand the various illness and we have to make the child away from the circumstances or the situations that can create a illness okay so that's very important then the second one is accidents the physical hazards that one is accident what is it accidents what are the accidents that can be commonly seen in this period so this during this age they are very 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 restless and they are becoming very naughty so they climb to the chairs they climb to the stairs um they just do whatever they can so they sometimes eat the poisonous plants or even poisonous uh what do you call instincts etc so there is a chance of getting problem with this accidents then they will start to swallow choking so we know that's uh, choke uh, or swallow small objects and uh, then they fall that can the fall can cause some head injury then they even they can jump to the uh, bucket full of water or even a small pond without having the proper attention of the parents so lot of things so the other hazard is the accidents then the next one is colic so what does it mean so it is a first to patterns of sudden and unexplained outburst the patterns of sudden and unexplained outburst of inconsolable crying so there is a chance of so the, the situation of crying uh, there may be low no stop at all so it can be attributed to food allergies or immature digestive system or immature nervous system and to a nervous caregiver so the babies outgrow this condition by about 3 months of age so after the babyhood by attaining 3, 3 months of age the babies will be out of this colic hazardous time then the fourth one is sudden infant death syndrome that is sids so it refers to the unexpected death of an infant why the per, uh, baby died so unexpected that's quite unexpected and uh, for which no physical cause can be found so when the child is uh, taken to the hospital so they will they cannot tell a physical cause and the maternal factors will be there that may include a young age multiple birth smoking prenatal drug abuse uh, no prenatal care all these are the causes of their uh, sudden death so that may have uh, created some problem with the child within the child and the child may die due to any kind of hazards then malnutrition that is the other one the malnutrition that may come from inadequate food intake okay inadequate food intake 
or from an unbalanced diet so that is something very important you know that in a place called atapadi so there were lot of uh, chill uh, babies died due to malnutrition and many of the babies got uh, some kind of disabilities due to the malnutrition so in atapadi and in africa and all it's common but still we experienced in atapadi years ago we uh, witnessed that and we experienced that lot of problem that happened among the babies due to malnutrition still the research and studies are going on on it okay so these are the physical assets in babyhood then we move on to the other stage that is early childhood so early childhood that is uh, the childhood that is divided into early childhood and late childhood so we have to learn it separately the early childhood so we know the childhood is divided in these two areas and uh, the time period of is 2 to 6 years that is early childhood and late childhood is 6 years until the children become sexually mature approximately at the age of 13 for girls and 14 for boys so till 13 or 14 the uh, from 6 to 13 or 14 that is considered as the late childhood and 2 to 6 years is considered as the early childhood so early childhood that is labeled by parents as the problem age or the troublesome age or the toy age that means from 2 to 6 years the that particular period is considered as the problematic age or the troublesome age or the toy age so it's the preschool age by educators they call it as a preschool age and a pre gang the exploratory or questioning age by psychology psychology tells call this particular age group of people are uh, babies are the uh, pre gang or exploratory or questioning age by psychologists the uh, a child belong to this age group they always ask what is this what is this why is it so we have experienced it they are having lot of questions regarding it. something happens around him okay so that's a particular age uh their physical development during this age proceeds at a slow rate in early childhood but the physiological habits whose foundations were laid in babyhood becomes well established the patterns of physical development in early childhood uh will be uh like during the um, based on the height the average annual increase in height 3 inches the 3 inches of height will be there then the weight at age 6 the children weigh approximately 7 times as much as they did at birth so the uh during the uh, when we think of the uh, birth weight it would be the early childhood during the childhood the weight will be 7 times as much okay so their growth and development for girls and boys uh that is clearly given the informations regarding their growth and development based on their small motor skills locomotor skills uh then their uh, manipulation skills brain development etc etc that is given the in detail in the particular text you can read it okay so there are lot of hazards may occur in this early childhood so what are the hazards first one is mortality what is that mortality so these are the physical hazards in the physical hazard you can see mortality what is that death death rate okay the chances of death so death starts to decline more rapidly during early childhood that means the mortality is the chances of living okay that shows the death start to decline so after a girl, boy or a girl is attaining this childhood early childhood so the chances of death is declines okay that's what we understand so death in the early childhood more often results from accidents than of illness and because the boys have more accidents than girls that's in early childhood are more frequent among boys than girls so we know that the thing is very clear boys are always smart 
it doesn't mean that the girls are not smart okay but still boys are more uh, restless and uh, mischievous in their childhood that's why it is like that then the second one is physical second physical hazard is illness illness so here the young children are highly susceptible to all kinds of illness though respiratory diseases are the most common here in this age the respiratory diseases are more common then the third uh, physical hazard is accidents okay so the young children they experience a lot of cuts a uh, lot of bruises then lot of infections then burns because the age is like that they want to experience everything that's why okay lot of accidents will happen then unattractiveness that is the next physical hazard unattractiveness as early childhood progresses the children become increasingly unattractive uh reaching low of point as they emerge into late childhood regardless of individual's age people react positively to those who are attractive looking and negatively to those who are uh, unattractive so they are having uh, a discrimination or discrepancy based on the attraction of others then young children interpret this as rejection and bitterly resent it then the other one is awkwardness so awkwardness in early childhood that may be due to brain damage at birth so if any brain damage uh, happened during the birth or at the time of birth that can cause some kind of awkwardness the children who are awkward due to uh, delay in their motor development that cannot keep up with their age so the age Uh, they have to in proportion to their age their motor activities should grow but if it is not happening there may be some problem then the other one is obesity obesity is always hazard it's a hazard first it is a health hazard then it is a hazard to attractiveness then obesity is a hazard in early childhood because it is the time when eating habits are being established so during this time eating habits is getting established to a child then we move on to the uh, late childhood so the physical development we know and what's what all things are happening in the late childhood so the late childhood extends from 6 years until children become sexually mature approximately at the age 13 or for girls and 14 for boys so this age is labeled by parents as troublesome sloppy or quarrelsome age then by educators they call this age as elementary school age then by psychologists they tell that gang age the age of conformity or the age of creativity so this time uh, or this age the uh, babies are getting noticed due to their creativity so we used to tell that oh he has got a wonderful uh, 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 interest to sing or to dance or even to draw or even to remember things something like that so this age they are giving some sort of uh, uh, clues on their interest so we can convert that to the creativity and we can understand we can closely observe and encourage them uh, to improve that particular abilities then the physical growth proceeds at a, a slow and relatively uniform growth that is influenced by the health nutrition and immunization gender and intelligence okay so about late childhood uh, the various dimensions are there then the physical hazards in late childhood what are things are there the physical hazards so we know the physical uh, many of the physical hazards of earlier years that persist into late childhood their effect on the child's physical well-being tend to be less severe and less far reaching than they were earlier so here uh, in the in addition to the illness or even accidents or obesity awkwardness that happens in the early childhood there are some more hazards that can be seen in the uh, late childhood like sex inappropriate body build then physical disabilities so the sex inappropriate body build means the girls with masculine body builds and boys with uh, what you call the girlish physics are likely to be ridiculed by their peers and pitied by adults 
So this uh, leads to a personal and social maladjustment, though more so for boys than girls. Okay, so there is a problem that happens in sex inappropriate. So a boy is having a tone of a girl or in the body shape of a girl that will be shameful for him and uh, that can be presently seen at uh, some sort of problems. He is uh, from the uh, peers or even pitied by adults will be there. So uh, that, I have a question. Yeah. Sorry to cut you in between. It's okay. Uh, uh, in uh, talking about, uh, do we do we have a fixed, um, uh, you know, a time period or an age uh, for, um, uh, you know, uh, for a, uh, you know, maybe you know, it's a boy, and yeah. uh, you know, when we talk about the trans thing, mm. a boy who wants to who wants to you know uh, be a girl, or yeah. feels uh, like yeah. a girl, or a girl want you know a girl child is born. Yeah. And, uh, you know, has a feeling, uh, uh, wants to be a boy, right? Yeah. So is, the interest. Is there, is there a, the interest. Is there a particular age? Uh, yeah, such know, kind of symptoms the... can be seen in the late childhood. That's why it is an in, a sex inappropriate body build. A hazard could be there. So, no, But this is, we talk, we're talking about uh, the physical appearance, right? Yeah. Uh, physical talking... appearances. Yeah. The, yes. Yeah. So well, I'm US... asking about is about mm -hmm. their mental status their emotional thing yeah. being born as a boy you know uh, yeah during this age girl, it's uh, the symptoms will be realized and uh, recognized in this stage in the childhood because they will be much more the boys will be having fond of uh, uh, dealing with the girls so they will be mingling with the girls uh, we no, can see uh, that no i'm saying a uh, boy is born yeah right? But his emotions and feelings uh, for himself uh, is you, for you. Want to know the age of transformation? Yeah, that trans happens. men. When we talk about trans men and trans women, yeah, right. A man uh, wants to be a woman. A woman wants to be a man. So, what yeah. is there a fixed time? Uh, uh, you know, uh, age where in mind they have these kind of feelings that they're born as a boy, but they want to be a girl. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any defined age yeah. for that? Yeah. Not about you, the physical appearance. Yeah, I understand. So I hope you, it, I hope you, you, you get yeah, my I understand, question. I understand, I understand. Right. You know, usually the psychologist and the doctors tell that till the age of three, they will not be having any idea of what sex they belong to for the babies till age three. So that's why they were always mingling together and the dresses dress code there is no strict dress code uh, dress code for them uh, mm -hmm. but after the age of three so we are giving special attention focuses on girls than boys okay so when it is after three or even four or even five during that time when we are trying to make that boy uh, to uh, continue with the nature of a boy and to dress there will be some sort of uh, reflexes or even refuses. Okay, so that they, they will start it. But the four, five, six, and when I have told you, know, this age, that is the childhood age. So I have clearly mentioned here, the late childhood extends from six years until children become sexually mature. Approximately at the age 13 for girls and 14 for boys. This maturation period during then they realize their interest. Okay. All right. During this age, then right. easily they want they will start to communicate based on that. So I though I am a boy, definitely I would like I don't have any interest to continue with this and I want to transform. Mm -hmm. My interest is on the girl. So the, this is the maturation period. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Okay. So uh, the sex inappropriate body build, then the physical disabilities. So the physical disabilities uh, that includes the many physical disabilities uh, that could be the after effect of some sort of accidents and uh, more common among boys. Then the seriousness of the after effect that depends on the degree of the disability. 
and on the way others treat the child. So here, the hazard is physical disabilities that may be uh, the result of an accident. So that may be a long term or even sometimes that's uh, existing till the end of the life of that particular person. So under the hazard, physical disabilities. So the accident that happens in childhood, that uh, is very important. So whether it's a long term or short term, that has to be taken care of. Then the normal development milestones. So that's motor behavior. So there are a lot of milestones and the normal development milestones. Uh, first one is motor behavior. So four weeks, three months, what happens? Five months, what happens? Six months, what happens? So all these things are there. And uh, there's a table in the text. Please read and understand. The second one is adaptive behavior. As same as that, the ability to adapt to the behavior. Then the language, they start to pick the language. They start to pick the words first, then to the sentences and uh, with respect or without respect. So all these things are there, the way they uh, communicate with their peer, to the parents, to their friends, to the neighbors, all these things, things are marked there. Then the personal and social behavior. Personal and social behavior, uh, the regards uh, face intently. That means uh, by two years, three years, four years, five years, what will happen? So they are very much uh, supervised. All during this age, they are very much supervised in their feeding, in their dressing, etc., etc., etc. So all these things are the normal developmental milestones that happen in the that is included in the uh, uh, childhood. Okay, then the psychological development in infancy and childhood. So we know that infancy is a time of extreme dependence, extreme dependence on adults. So many psychological activities are just beginning the ability to speak, coordinate sensations and physical actions, to think with the symbols and to imitate and learn from others. So this is a particular age of imitation because they do not have any fresh uh, knowledge or experiences that are uh, coming from their own, but they are trying to grasp things. They're trying to understand things. They're trying to imitate things by um, words or even symbols or even colors, etc. And in this age, in the middle age and late childhood, children master the fundamental skills of reading. So they start to read, they start to write, they are just uh, doing some arithmetic and they're formally exposed to the larger world and its culture. So they are trying to expose themselves to the larger world, the world around them. So they are widening their thoughts, they are widening their perception, they are trying to know more things, they are trying to look more things and experience more things and the culture. So uh, they will start to know where he belonged to, uh, what kind of family they have, what kind sort of culture that they are following, etc. All these things are happening in their psychological development. Then uh, the achievements that he becomes a more central theme because we are assessing the child based on their achievements, right? The child itself is uh, assessing and evaluating the, uh, his abilities by achievements because rewards. The child is very happy to get something from others, words or even some gifts, etc., etc., etc. All those things are a good achievement for them. That's what they believe and they are uh, trying to have a focus on that. So they want to get fond of everyone. So they uh, want to be the center of attraction. In a world we can tell that. So that that thought will be progressively seen in this particular age, infancy and childhood. Then Erickson's theory of psychosocial development. So if you go to the test, definitely you can get a lot of explanation okay, regarding that. But this theory is very important and uh, we have to understand it. This theory has eight distinct stages, each with two possible outcomes. So according to this theory, successful completion of each stage results in a healthy personality and successful interactions with others. Okay, so 
what are the eight stages it is a trust versus mistrust a trust versus mistrust what does it mean trust versus mistrust what does it mean have you heard about erickson his theory yes sir yes sir okay what does it mean trust versus mistrust so this is the child uh, out of his experiences mm. and when he gains the positive reinforcement he starts building the, the particular phenomena of that personality trait trust mm. and if the trust deficit is there then the child will try to avoid it sir very good then any other explanation trust versus mistrust something very interesting this theory is very interesting actually anybody knows sir when the expectations of a child is met mm. we can say a trust and when it is not met we can say mistrust yeah as simple as that very good anyone else so the expectations the wish of child that is the matter here okay so the child is wishing something from the parents that is a trust when it is not done it's a mistrust this stage is very important in that then autonomy versus shame. sir 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 example is it when uh, if a child starts crying and and his comfort yeah. or his mom or his dad does not give him the basic necessity like milk then he will yes. mistrust yeah and he will think that the this world is a unsafe place or the surrounding is unsafe no it's not like that so the for a moment or a time period the child is reacting in that way that's all it won't it's not a for a long time no if we are not giving that moment definitely we will be ready to give in the other second or uh, some time yes, later no so the child is having a feeling of trust and mistrust that's all because all these are the transformations that happens in the child during the psychosocial development sir basically basically this anxiety the development of anxiety starts because of this mistrust but if it continues for a long time yes yes continuously mistrust the experiences the child experiences mistrust then anxiety and yeah. other negative traits yes yeah, exactly then the other one is autonomy versus shame what is that autonomy versus shame autonomy hmm what is that you know that just try to explain um, i can uh, give it a shot uh according to my understanding just in layman's language uh, autonomy Sir, was... uh... Uh, go ahead anji sorry sir no, yeah continue continue sir, no autonomy means uh, uh, initiative na no? child wants to have initiative yes and auto means self, is... some self actions Se- or self self action self action yeah mm. then continue sir, yeah. sir, sir um, um, if if that self action we we try to stop him na child if we try to uh, stop child then he he becomes uh, careful and doubtful okay then what does it mean uh, autonomy versus shame so the personality will sir will develop accordingly of the child if continuously mm-hmm. it happens hmm so self gender and identity all these things will be there in that autonomy versus shame when we discuss about that okay somebody was trying to tell it in a clear words was that sir uh, autonomy can be defined as where a child uh, try to know something new and mm-hmm. uh, he try to learn something different and the okay. family uh, encourages him to do the thing okay and uh, shame can be defined as it is a uh, experience or we can say it is a part of human experience okay yes or parents encourage the child to uh, or they promote the decisions of a child and encourage uh, a child autonomy hmm then shame then there is a particular uh, 
problem that happens with this shame autonomy versus shame so shame is it is a part of human experience which uh, comes automatically sometime we can say part of emotion hmm that's also. so regarding the this particular state how we can understand this autonomy versus shame i i would say sir sir the shame means when you have a inferiority complex about anything the feeling that makes you you inferior that yeah. that can be a shame actually <laughs> okay okay so some confusions will be there autonomy versus shame so uh, one and three so we fit like between the ages of one and three the child or the children begin to assert their independence always they are trying to assert their independence uh, by walking away from their mother or even picking uh, some toy object to play with by their own and making choices of their likeness etc etc what to wear what to eat etc they start to have their own choice so if the child is in this stage they are encouraged and supported in their increased independence they become more confident okay when a child is showing his own initiative to choose what are things to wear to eat or whatever etc if the if that's in a good way the parents or somebody will try, try to encourage them so increased independence will be there for that particular child so such kind of children will be more confident and secure in their own ability to survive the world okay so that's autonomy so when we think of this versus shame so if a child is criticized overly controlled or not given the opportunity to assert themselves so the parent will be forcing him to do this the parent insisting him to do this the parent will give the food the child may be the child refuses to eat but only uh, everything is done as per the wish of the parents so that is a kind of guilt such kind of children they will be very less confident and they will feel to shy they will be having lack of self esteem etc etc such kind of people that kind of particular stage is called as autonomy versus shame you understood now yes sir okay next one is the initiative versus guilt what is that initiative versus guilt so from 3 age 3 to 6 the children assert themselves more frequently so they begin to plan activities they start to make up games and they initiate a lot of activities with others so if they are getting any opportunity they develop a sense of initiative and they feel secure and they are very much confident about their ability to lead others and make their ability uh, they are confident enough to make decisions such a particular attitude is called as initiative that's a stage is called as initiative uh, and if something happens due to the criticism so the somebody is always uh, telling that what all things you are doing is not right okay so you need to consult with me to do something so that tendency is quelled or even the criticism or control uh, is over given to that particular child a sense of guilt is developed by that particular child so they may feel like a nuisance to others and they will be having a complex they will be feeling a lot of complex they will be lacking the self initiative interest they will be uh, looking for others to do things such particular stage is known as initiative versus guilt the two extremes okay then industry versus inferiority what is it industry industry versus inferiority so from age 6 years to puberty the children begin to develop a sense of pride in their accomplishments so they will be having a good confidence so i have attained i have accomplished these many things they will have their own confidence so they initiate a lot of projects they see them do uh, do to completion 
and feel good about what they have achieved so they are very much privileged and they are pride uh, to what they have achieved so during this time the teachers play an increased role in the child's development so understanding and observing and noticing the good element the teacher is guiding the teacher is motivating so that's why the teacher has got a major role in this if the children encouraged and reinforced for their initiative they begin to feel industrious and feel confident so once they are doing a lot of things good things and they are getting a lot of positive results from this we the teachers are, are uh, uh, always uh, motivating them encouraging them so if that attitude is uh, frequently getting to the child that the child will be uh, having an uh, uh, sort of industry in the sense that the child is becoming productive so the child will be having a goal the child will be able to fix that goal and set the time limit for that etc etc so the child will be very productive in that case so if the initiative is not encouraged so it is restricted by the parents or the teachers then the child begins to feel inferior okay so that's why it is known as the industry and inferior uh, complex okay then intimacy versus isolation intimacy versus isolation what is that intimacy sir this is the youngster stage yeah where where, where our our teenagers yes. uh, tend to tend so to be they start to have their own relationship their own relationship sir yeah they try to choose their own peers their own particular friendships etc so that is the intimacy then if that is not right and if though it is right and if it is not encouraged by others and they will not be having any uh, progressive outcomes from their own life if we are noticing such people we will start to avoid them right so some sort of students they are very much attractive and they are much interested with others and they are doing a lot of things they will be having good intimation with everyone and we have to in, in, increase them if the person is not properly encouraged and not having uh, proper attention by the teachers or the parents the person will get isolated Sir, this is the most crucial stage yeah yeah Where? the challenging stage okay then generativity versus stagnation what does it mean generativity stagnation sir age of career mid career yeah that means so they are uh, having their own generativity they can generate things they can generate things according to their uh, wish their age their situation etc 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 but if it's not done if the child is not productive as such to find his own generativity needs definitely he will be in the stagnation period or in this that situation then integrity versus despair so i tell that okay i have done everything i am confident enough i have all the resources i am having a good relationship i have all the capability to make decisions etc etc that's my integrity because i have been coming from that background and many people were there to uh, encourage me to improve my potentials many people helped me but the child one child is not done he has not get any uh, opportunities for that that causes despair okay so these are the stages uh, the as per the erickson's theory of psychosocial development so the distinct eight distinct stages we have been into any of these stages during our development social psychosocial development okay so then the early emotional development uh, so at least i have to finish this block it's already 12 i'm just uh, giving you the highlights only so the early emotional development here the emotions are strong feelings such as love fear or anger so these are the um, basic emotions or the strong feelings that we have as in emotions like love fear or anger then emotions are the part of a person's character so it's a part of my character so there are a lot of positive and negative emotions are there positive emotions include joy 
love, excitement, enthusiasm, and negative emotions like anxiety, anger, guilt, sadness, etc. So the emotions depend on the consciousness. So it's based on my conscious, uh, consciousness, the emotions is conveyed. What kind of emotions? So I am 35 years old. So my emotion in that particular time, that should be uh, from my consciousness. If it goes beyond the consciousness, if I am not able to control my emotions, I am not a physically or mentally. Physically, I am a grown-up person, but mentally, I am not uh, a grown-up person. And my emotional development is not to the uh, up to the extent. So the emotions also affect our perception, thinking, and behavior. So we know that it also affects my perception. What is my perception? My perception is nothing but the way I perceive things about the other one, about the other object, or about the other world, other thing. So here, whether my thinking is in the right way, is that got a uh, what you call equilibrium or in the balanced level, like my emotions are based on my thinking or even my behavior. So everything is very much important. Then temperament. So in this age, it's a person's characteristic, temperament, the ability to see things and adjust with that particular situation or even the people. That's our temperament, the ability to bear with it. Okay, it is a person's characteristic, biologically based way of approaching and reacting to peoples and situations. So in temperament, the how of behavior, the how, why is it so? How I am behaving to the other one, that is clearly conveyed and not what people do but how they go about doing it. So how they are doing it, that's very much here. So that can be very much seen in this temperament. So in babies, temperament refers to their innate personality. So that comes from their inner person. The general pattern of how babies will react to and interact with their environment that is present from their birth. So the temperament is associated with such physiological signs as heart rate, blood pressure, and pupil dilation. That's uh, medical. Okay. Then the psychological hazards in this uh, uh, childhood, that there are four common psychological hazards that frequently arise in relation to emotional development during sorry, infancy. They are emotional deprivation, stress, then too much affection, dominant emotions. So the emotional deprivation. So this uh, uh, particular... Uh, stage is a stage of emotional development or even the emotional deprivation. So there are a lot of things that happens. Then the stress. Stress, you know that, a lot of things. The, our children, they in this particular infancy period, they, they find very stressful because of a lot of things. If we closely observe and examine them, we will be able to understand what are the stress factors. Then too much of affection. Some of them will get too much of affection. That is as I said. We should not give too much of aff affection to our kids. They, then they will be uncontrollable. Then the dominant emotions. So some sort of emotions will be uh, constantly dominant for them. Okay. So that we have to find and we have to, to uh, make changes in that. Then the social development in infancy and childhood. So here, the social development means acquisition of the ability to behave in accordance with social expectation. It deals with the adjustment to people, with others, and learn the right ways of interaction. Becoming socialized to involve three processes. First, uh, learning to behave in socially approved ways. Second,